about a dozen FBI agents have been gone back and forth on that driveway throughout the day. They packed up about an hour and a half ago. They collected bags of evidence. We were the first on the scene here this afternoon. We got here as police were putting up this crime scene tape and six hours later, the detectives are still inside that townhome here off of Townwood Court. Police found the victim shot to death inside that townhome. There's a little bit of ice underneath there, so it's not too bad. It's not gonna take it too long to clean up. I probably should do my photographer's car a little bit though too help him out. He's been dealing with me for 24 hours. It is a crime to cross these tracks. In fact, the no trespassing signs are everywhere, even printed right on the rails. That still does not stop UVA students from crossing across these tracks, but now the city hopes this seven foot tall fence will do that. Instead, Boggs allegedly shot that money on personal expenses, including food, clothes, gifts, and travel. You may be able to hear right now, there's actually, I don't know, Chavis, our photographer, I don't know if we can pan up to the sky right now, there is actually a helicopter up here. It is a packable heavy snow, enough you can make a snowball from, and it continues to come down here. This should be a golf course. That should be a fairway. Fresh off the presses, this is the big bracket tee here with the big word in orange, champions. It's a word that UVA is not too familiar with. The last time they could wear this word was 1976. That's why you see this word champions everywhere. Inspectors say as you're walking around your house, check for things like cracks in the chimney and places where it may have pulled apart from the house. Also look for shift in the foundation. Inside your floor will feel spongy. Officer Thornton grabbed a t-shirt. He wrapped up the baby in it. He made sure she was breathing and crying. Then he went to his own patrol car. He got a flashlight out and used the lanyard to wrap around the umbilical cord and cut it off. Good evening, Steve and Casey. One of those property owners calls Dominion arrogant. These property owners are taking a stand now. The wintergreen property owners that are in the way of this latest proposed alternative route are rallying their neighbors and joining their neighbors along the original route to the north through Afton. A route would come over here across the meadow, okay? From his front porch on Fortune's Point, it is such a beautiful place. The mountains are so beautiful. It's so restful. It's so, it's so tranquil. David Suiso imagines an unfortunate future view. It would clear cut every single tree, okay, go down the slope. It would completely destroy Fortune's Point. The Suiso family's property is in the path of the alternative route for Dominion's natural gas pipeline through Nelson County. We didn't think it was possible they could do that. And then we were completely stunned. It made no sense at all. The no trespassing and no pipeline signs posted send the message from Fortune Point's six property owners to Dominion surveyors. They won't show up here, we're sure. Okay, we're confident. The alternative route would take the pipeline right through Wintergreen's main entrance and up a ridge Marty Caesar's mountaintop retreat overlooks. This is just an absolutely magnificently beautiful mountains. She moved from suburban D.C. to retire here. Caesar compares the view of the possible pipeline path to a highway ripping through the ridges. Okay, so you're talking about a 10 lanes strip that would be coming straight down that mountain. My issue is tearing up and destroying uh, property, taking property away from people, ruining basically in some cases their livelihood um, when there's an alternate route. Their alternate would take the pipeline out of Nelson County completely. The Wintergreen Nature Foundation agrees. The nonprofit Natural Protection Group worries the pipeline will destroy the county's undisturbed lands and history. The fact that Nelson County is undeveloped means that there are many sites here that we haven't even had the chance to discover yet. Suiso promises Dominion will discover Wintergreen united with its Afton neighbors along the original pipeline route. Now we have two horrible, ridiculous, awful, destructive routes, okay? We're gonna fight the northern route, just like we're gonna fight this route. Five years ago tonight, police announced remains found on an Albemarle County farm were the missing Virginia Tech student. That ended three months of searching for 20-year-old Morgan and started five years of searching for a murder suspect. With a man the Harringtons believe killed her behind bars, they have a new focus. NBC 29's Matt Tallholm is here with a story you'll see only on NBC 29. Hi, Matt. Good evening, Stephen Casey. Anchorage Farm, where Morgan's remains were found discarded in a field, has a new name. A suspect's face that Morgan's mother called Sketch for five years has a name. And tonight, the network of supporters who've rallied behind the Harringtons has a name. Team Justice.
We still have disbelief uh, that how could someone have murdered our precious Morgan. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I hate like hell that that was her destiny was to be killed at 20. Her daughter's bedroom suspended in time. The first couple of years we wandered around in a fog. Jill Harrington survives Mom, with the memory of her life. final moment with Morgan, a mother's scared. message. Two, four, one. I love you too much, forever, and once beyond forever. Morgan left her parents' Roanoke home October 17, 2009, heading with friends to the Metallica concert at the John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville. She vanished from a nearby bridge, abducted into the night. Morgan, two, four, one. The message played out this time, a plea to bring Morgan home. We are trying, honey, hang on. That search would end January 26, 2010. The remains are those of Morgan Dana Harrington, the 20-year-old Virginia Tech student. An Albemarle County farmer discovered Morgan's remains in a pasture that cold winter day. All those clouds looked like a bruise moving across the sky. Five years later, we're finding our new family. The Harringtons are forming a family of strangers. Jill leads a network of volunteers from her home basement headquarters of the nonprofit Help Save the Next Girl. They are all our precious children. You don't draw the line that mine only do I want to save. It's too late for Morgan. Let's save the next one. We are always, always helping other families. Are you putting certain sizes in? Okay. Amanda St. Clair felt drawn to the Harringtons in the days after Morgan's disappearance. The mother of a college-aged daughter has helped yeah, help save I the will. next girl grow <laughs> from five fun. chapters on college and high school campuses to 20. They talk about you know stranger danger with kids when they're little, but when you get to a certain point in school, it's kind of forgotten about. Help Save the Next Girl reaches worldwide on social media, designing flyers with faces of the missing, creating personal safety curriculum for classrooms, even lobbying lawmakers to change how Virginia mobilizes resources to search for missing persons. Our product is our message. That message is morphing. 2015 is the year of justice. This will be the spring of justice. Morgan's memory blooms in the colorful Blacksburg home of her here, art teacher at I Virginia Tech. Something. Morgan sat on the floor exactly where my chair is now. Jane Lillian Vance welcomed Stairs Morgan's class her into her food. home the semester before her murder. Her because her eyes were just sparkling and I said, what Morgan? What is it in your eyes? And she said simply, my mom needs to come here. And she would, a sketch. I said, you don't know me. I taught your daughter. I loved her. I saw her. I have something that belongs to you. Brought the artist and the anguished mother together in the year after Morgan's murder. We spoke the same language of loyalty. And help save the next girl was in my veins before Jill invented the words for it. That bond allowed Vance to complete two paintings for the Harringtons. The Hunted depicts the field where Morgan's body was found. A portrait shows the sparkle in her eyes. Blended in the brush strokes of each are Morgan's cremated remains. And Morgan knew the beauty and the detail and commitment of this place. That's what I try to do in these paintings. I tell stories. Vance's studio is the starting point now for all new Help Save the Next Girl chapters. This is the crew we are for Help Save the Next Girl. This is the deepest kind of commitment you can have. Ian Heflin lives that commitment. You know, every day, you know, Morgan is part of my life. You have been so loyal to Morgan, who sat beside you. After meeting Morgan in Vance's class. You don't expect those people to change your life that you sit in class with, but so many of them have, and especially Morgan. He's coordinating Help Save the Next Girl's newest phase, Team Justice. Morgan died so young, but she was so open to the world. And now the rest of the world is opening up too, and that's justice. The team emerges from the sense of relief that the man they suspect killed Morgan is behind bars. Justice means this person will not hurt anyone else. The nonprofit is selling yeah, these limited edition t shirts on this <laughs> fifth awesome. anniversary to support its outreach efforts. Logos for all 20 chapters cover the front, the dots of 241 on the back. The reach is magnificent. It matters. We keep going. We are tireless. And it's effortless to be tireless when Morgan is near. Jill Harrington promises goodness will prevail. 
we are making sure that she is the uh, catalyst for some good in the world, a lot of good. As this mother and her team create a life for Morgan. Well, I think she's orchestrating some of this because some of the things they could be happening without a celestial assist. The Albemarle County Commonwealth's attorney has not charged anyone with Morgan's abduction and murder at this point. The Team Justice t-shirts are selling now online to benefit Help Save the Next Girl and its mission. We've put a link at NBC29.com and I've checked in. They have sold more than 230 of these t-shirts just since 10:15 this morning when they went on sale. That's the time that police called Morgan Harrington's mother and said, we found your remains five years ago. A Shenandoah Valley strongman competitor has beaten the odds and the decades. This muscled athlete pulled through a two-year battle with cancer, pumped up to survive a struggle with obesity, and now is proving you only get stronger with age. 135 pounds, and we rep it out as long as we can. Pumping up the pounds. 50 pounds for reps of eights. Means everything to this power lifting lady. We usually pick up a car, so we practice our deadlifts. 375 for reps of fives and threes. But age is just a number. I'm 56 years old. It's tough to believe. I was never an athlete whatsoever. Strong woman Mary Jacobson began bulking up after a battle with cancer pushed her to pump up. The third doctor says, stop. You can't hide anymore. You do have cancer and we have to take care of this today. Mary had adenocarcinoma, rare when doctors diagnosed her in 1995. The aggressive cancer attacked the tissue of her uterus. They told me I only had a 10% chance of making it. Mary signed her life away for surgical research at a military hospital in California. She spent two years in a coma. For two years, doctors pumped Mary with experimental drugs, steroids, growth hormones that caused her to gain 150 pounds. By growing, they were keeping me alive. The cells were operating. A survivor, Mary faced a new battle with weight. So she started working out two to three hours a day, six days a week. Somehow I got an addiction that I'm losing the weight, looking good. She hasn't stopped in 11 years. Mary's attempted to pull a plane and is the only woman to tug a train all to raise money for nonprofits across the country. The challenging part is that I've been able to be successful at it, and at the same time, I've decided to do something for mankind and for other people. Mary's boyfriend, Ed Martin, is one of those people. She's the one that showed me that it can be done. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer last fall. I said, I'm gonna stand by you, I'm not gonna give up, and we're gonna work this out. As big as she is, I listen to her. <laughs> Ed says following Mary's strict diet and workout routine have gotten him through cancer treatments without the side effects doctors told him he'd experience. I haven't had the first symptom of anything they have told me, and I give credit to Mary. She won't let him give up on gym time. Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday winds up to be five hours. Mary hopes her story can inspire other cancer patients that a diagnosis is not a death sentence. It's not too late. Just because you're 20 or 66 or 99, it's never too late. Mary came in second out of six women at a strongman challenge in Northern Virginia yesterday. Next weekend, she's headed to Philadelphia for a big competition there. You can see much more, an extended interview with Mary coming up in just a few hours on our website by clicking on this story at NBC29.com.